Hey guys, welcome back to Axis and Allies the Garrison. This is uh, Detroit coming to you from Rochelle Park, New Jersey. We're coming to you from the bunker here. This is Axis and Allies the Garrison with another episode of the YouTube Wars. It is episode 2.6 and it is finally Hilltop Hillbox's turn to make his moves with his Italians, okay? Things are getting hot and heavy, okay? After the... Uh, victory that the UK forces had in the Pacific where the uh, where the British were able to successfully take two Chinese provinces away from the Japanese. The fact that the uh, minor industrial complex in Shanghai was decommissioned permanently has brought up the morale of the Allied powers, okay? Of course, it's a big hit. It's a big hit for Japan. Good for the UK. Definitely a morale booster for the allies who, in, spe specifically uh, with the UK, at, who has been sustaining several uh, uh, military defeats on the Euro European theater side of the war. So good for them. Uh, I'm happy for the, the uh, British who needed a morale booster. Okay, Needless to say, let's go on. Uh, things in the Mediterranean now are starting to pick up. Okay. Situation is that currently in the Mediterranean, you have a powerful British fleet in season 98, but you also have a considerable, uh, 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 what is it, a uh, presence of military aircraft in Algiers. This is a golden opportunity for the Italians. Question is, where are the Italians going to go? They only have so many resources available to them. They can only attack so many targets. Are the Italians going to attack the British fleet in season 98? Or are they going to go ahead and attack the uh, British Air Force in Algiers? Find out. Sit tight. Enjoy the show. And as always, let me know what you guys are thinking. All right, guys. So it is Italy's turn. Italy will purchase one strategic bomber, one artillery, and one destroyer for a grand total of 26 industrial production certificates, 26 IPCs. All right, so before we go ahead with Italy's turn, let's make a quick recap of the current ground and naval situations that we have going on both in the European theater side of war and Pacific uh, uh, theater of war. Okay, uh, the last moves that were made by the UK, and of course the UK is under the command of, uh, of uh, Sire Blood, was surprising to say the least. The Japanese were literally taken, down, taken with their pants down, okay? The UK uh, was able to take the territories or Chinese provinces that are that were under Japanese occupation, both uh, Kiangxi and Kiangsu, okay, with, with a surprise series of sneak attacks. The end result was that the Japanese minor industrial complex in Kiangsu was permanently permanently taken out of uh, out of commission. This, of course, comes at a very good time for the UK. Uh, reason being that the UK for the past uh, couple of rounds has been uh, sustaining a series of losses or, or defeats. Uh, this victory for the UK is a tremendous morale booster for the Allies. So good for Sired. My compliments to uh, the Commander-in-Chief of the UK, uh, UK Forces Field Marshal Sired Blood, who did, an, uh, who did a very, very good job at, at capitalizing uh, and seeing that there was a weakness in the Japanese uh, defensive uh, ring here in this region of the map. All right, so having said that, okay, let's not forget also that the U.S., okay, is also poised uh, to take action. Unfortunately for the U.S., they are still technically out of the war and will have to wait until it is their turn to uh, start making their moves. And I guess we shall find out whether they go into action uh, round three or round four. Okay, so let's go over to the European theater side of the war, where you have an interesting situation developing here in the Mediterranean, where you have uh, the Italian fleets and the uh, British Royal Navy in season 98 fa uh, facing each other. It seems to me that the, this could be this could lead to a potential uh, engagement uh, sometime in the near future. Also, earlier this round, uh, during uh, the UK's turn, Sired uh, sank a, an unprotected naval transport, a German naval transport, in Season 91. Uh, upon the completion of that mission, the British decided or chose to land the entirety of their 
uh, Air Force in Algeria. Okay, so as of now, uh, there is no air cover or no Air Force uh, uh, defending the United Kingdom. So very interesting. I'm sure that Syed has something up his sleeve and we shall find out this uh, turn whether the Italians under the command of uh, Hilltop Pillbox, whether or not they're going to uh, engage the British Royal Navy in season 98 or whether they will potentially take a swing at the Royal Air Force in Algeria. All right, guys. Which actually, you know what? Um, let's declare the combats. As a matter of fact, uh, the the Italians will be yes, no surprise here. The Italians will be attacking Algeria, and the second battle will be the battle for Alexander. All right, so let's go ahead and make the actual um, combat movements. Uh, the Italian army in Tobruk will be moving eastbound and will be attacking the single infantry division. British Infantry Division defending Alexandria. So that'll be uh, the first battle declared. The second battle will be as follows. All right, so the British, actually the Italian cruiser in C-Zone 93 will move south, okay, and will be attacking Algiers. It will perform a, a naval bombardment. The Italian battle, uh, the uh, cruiser and battleship in C-Zone 96 will also make a movement at 1, okay, into season 94, okay. Uh, the Italian naval transport, season 96, will pick up one infantry and one artillery in Malta, okay, and will unload, perform an amphibious landing, will be attacking the British, the Allied forces, both British uh, Air Force and French infantry defending, okay, the other Italian naval transport, okay, will make one movement north and will pick up two infantry, okay, and will sail east, actually west, and will also unload two additional infantry units, okay. And the third uh, Italian naval transport will pick up one armored unit from Albania, and one infantry from southern Italy, and will move back into C zone 94. Okay, and it will also perform an amphibious landing there. Okay. Okay, so these are the declared battles. We'll be back shortly with the non combat, actually, with. Uh, the results of battle, and then shortly afterwards, the non-combat movements. Okay, in addition, I was forgetting one uh, uh, key component of this battle for Algeria. I was forgetting that the Italians have two fighters that are in southern Italy. Those, south, those, Itali those Italian fighters will deploy, and at a movement of one, two, and three, will also join and support that attack in Algeria. So that'll be at a movement of three. Both of these fighters will have two movements left in their fuel gauges. All right, so we'll then go ahead with uh, the battles, and we shall be back shortly with the results of the battles that occurred. Let's review the order of combat. All right, the battle for Algeria. Okay, the battle proved to be very costly for the uh, UK. Another costly battle. Uh, the UK lost all four of its uh, actually, yeah, all four of its uh, fighter squadrons along with the defending French infantry division. The attacking Italians lost three 
infantry divisions in the attack. All right, so let's go uh, east. Battle of Alexandria. The Italians were successful here as well. No surprises. Uh, the defending British infantry was destroyed. The Italians did not sustain any losses in this battle. All right, so let's go straight ahead into uh, the non-combat movements. All right, so the the Italian uh, artillery in Kenya will move up north, okay, into Anglo-Egyptian Sudan. The two fighters that participated in the attack in Algiers will, because they have two uh, movements left in their fuel gauges, will fly up north, one and two, and will land on the German aircraft carrier, the Graf Zeppelin. All right, so let me move these chips. The Italian destroyer in C zone 93 will move at a movement of two, one and two. It will be in C zone 96. All right. The two Italian infantry divisions in southern France will be railed into southern Italy at a movement of two. That's one and two. Okay. Uh, the Italian army in Yugoslavia will move south and will link up with the, four, the, uh, the Italian infantry division in Albania. The Italian bomber in Romania will move, will deploy, and at a movement of one, two, and three, will land in southern France. All right, uh, that's about it for the non-combat movements for the Italians. Let's go ahead with the final placements of units. Uh, the Italian bomber, newly purchased, will go in southern France as well as the new destroyer and artillery are both in southern France. All right, so then that, uh, so in southern France, you have two infantry, one artillery, a bomber, and a destroyer in C zone 95. All right, so the Italians will be collecting this, at the end of this round, a total of 20 IPCs, which they will be carrying over to round three. All right, it is the end of uh, episode uh, five point, uh, no correction, 2.6, I believe. It is now the turn of the Anzacs and shortly afterwards, uh, the French as well. All right, very interesting round. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And as always, let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, how do you see things uh, not only in the European theater side of the war, but how do you see things also in the Pacific side of the war? Commentaries are welcomed, guys. Look forward to uh, seeing what they are. Okay, guys, as always, don't forget to bunker down and play.